All right, I'm going to be looking through the Oscar nominations and let's see how many of them I've actually seen. And if I think any of these could be any good, I'll like read the plot or whatever. Just give my thoughts on them. So I think I, I glanced at it. I think I've only seen one Best Picture nomination, but we'll see. We'll probably just look at the Best Pictures, but okay, let's look. Well, on Oscars.org. Doing the actors first. How do I look at that? Where's Best Picture? Interesting setup on this website to have Best Picture towards the bottom. I don't understand. Maybe this is the order they're announced. No, that's a, Best Picture is usually last. Whatever. Okay. No, I can't find it. Where is it? First one on this list, All Quiet on the Western Front. I mean, I know what this movie's about. I've seen the one from... Uh, um, was it 1930 or something? It's one of the first best picture. Oh, yeah, here it is, 1930. Uh, that one's a, that's a pretty good movie. I mean, it's, it's very old. Um, but there's a scene where he's like tall. He's, he's with a French girl, I think, and he speaks no French. It's, and I think it's a German film. It's chairs in the way. She speaks French. He speaks no French. And she speaks no German. I think he's German. And they're like, he's kind of like talking to her. Almost like confessing, to, or like he's like kind of like just expressing his feelings to someone who has no way of even understanding what he's saying. And it's kind of a touching scene. War breaks out in Germany in 1914. Paul Baumer, is that how you pronounce that? And his classmates quickly enlist in the army to serve their fatherland. No sooner are they drafted than the first images from the battlefield show them the reality of war. Yeah, the original is a pretty brutal film. I've heard this one's good too, but I mean, is this a Netflix film or is this on Netflix? Two hours twenty is pretty long, but I don't know. Let's see what the uh, what did the critics think of this? Ninety one percent. I don't even really care about uh, critic reviews or even audience reviews, but it's kind of interesting to see. Seventy six on Metacritic. That's actually pretty good for Metacritic. It's, it tends to trend towards the mean rather than extremes, like Rotten Tomatoes kind of more does. Like, you see a lot of movies with 90 plus on Rotten Tomatoes, you don't really see that on Metacritic. All right, so, I mean, that movie could be good. Um, I'm not sure how much I really want to see it. I'd kind of rather rewatch the original. I think they made a couple more after that, too. I think it's based on a book or something, I don't know. Avatar The Way of Water is the next one on the list. Oh, they're doing this alphabetically, okay. It's uh, the long-awaited sequel to the James Cameron classic. Jake Sully and Nate Thierry have formed a family and are doing everything to stay together, huh? However, they must leave their home and explore the regions of Pandora. When an ancient threat resurfaces, Jake must fight a difficult war against the humans. And this made like a billion dollars. But, oh, uh, two, wow, so it made two billion. Two point two one four billion. Um, But I don't know. The first one, I didn't see the first one in theaters. I didn't see this one. I didn't, so I didn't see it in theaters. So I know that's like the draw to these movies because they're like spectacles and I guess cool in 3D or whatever. Um, the first one, I remember it being long. This one's over three hours long. How long was the first one? Two hours 42. So this one's a, this new one is a half hour longer. Narratively, it might be fairly standard stuff, but visually speaking, Avatar The Way of Water is a stunningly immersive experience. 76%, which isn't really that great on Rotten Tomatoes. People are expecting this to get more nominations. I think it only got a few. All right, so kind of not super great on critics, actually. I mean, good, solid, but I thought maybe people would like it more. But I'm not, I am not. probably won't ever see this. Who knows, maybe one day. Next one on the list, The Banshees of Inna Sharon, which I have seen and I liked a lot, but I like Martin McDonough a lot. And I like, uh, what's his name? Colin Farrell. This guy, Barry, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, Kogan? He was really good in this movie. A very tragic, very sad character. So on a remote island off the coast of Ireland, Podrick is devastated when his buddy, Colm, suddenly puts an end to a lifelong friendship. With help from his sister and a troubled young islander, Podrick sets out to repair the damaged relationship by any means necessary. However, as Colm's resolve only strengthens, he soon delivers an ultimatum that leads to shocking consequences. So it's kind of, a, it's a very odd movie. Uh, it's definitely bizarre. I love In Bruges. It's one of my favorite movies. And so what, he made that other movie a couple years ago, Three Billboards. That was good too. So they each of them have a similar comedic style while also being very, like having a very serious tone as well. He like melds those two very well. Like a dark comedy with like a heavy, 
like heavy dramatic element. I guess that's what dark comedies kind of are anyway, but I feel like this is even more so. To a certain extent, it's more like he makes dramas that are very funny. It's hard to exactly pinpoint his movies. No one makes movies exactly like he does. It probably did really well with critics. 87 on Metacritic and 96 on Rotten Tomatoes. Probably none of these are going to have bad scores because they all got Oscar nominations. Next up, Elvis. This is Baz Luhrmann, doesn't he? He makes those like showy movies, doesn't he? And very like visually colorful and stuff. Did he make that that uh, Great Gatsby movie with what's his name? Great Gatsby Leo. Yeah, it was Baz Luhrmann. Okay, I haven't seen this, but I've heard this is good. Um, let's see. Elvis, from his rise to fame to his unprecedented superstardom, rock and roll icon Elvis Presley maintains. Complicated relationship with his enigmatic manager, Colonel Tom Parker. Oh, isn't that Tom Hanks? Isn't he in this movie? Central to Presley's journey and happiness is one of the most influential people in his life, Priscilla. Is that his wife or something, I guess? I'm not really big into biopics generally, and I don't really have an interest in this, honestly. If I'm being honest. Let's see how it did. 77. It's about what, uh... What's it called, uh, Avatar was? I mean, that's kind of, they're both like, uh, what is it called? Almost like, more like blockbusters. That's like 64 is, like, that's a solid score, but that's pretty low, especially for a Best Picture winner. Everything, everywhere, all at once. At first I confused this with, uh, there's that Tom Hanks movie, um, what is that called? It, extremely Close, Extremely Incredibly Close, something like that. Let me look this up. Something like that. Extremely loud and incredibly close. I don't know there's something about the, the title that's that's similar. Um, but this movie, I think I think it's like a kid and his dad is Tom Hanks and he dies and Tom Hanks dies in 9-11. And then but right before his dad, like, I've only seen a trailer so I could have this way wrong and it's been a while. But he like gives him a key but then he dies in 9-11 and then he's like, I have to find where the, what the key opens. Or, or he like has a box for the key to open but then he loses the key. He spends the movie, like, trying to find the key, and I remember just this clip from the trailer where he's, like, crying, and he, like, opens a toolbox, and it's just tons of keys are pouring out, and it's like, how is he going to find the key? But I could be completely misunderstanding the movie, and then just remembering a very small part of the trailer. But that movie doesn't look interesting at all to me. I think that was actually nominated for Best Picture. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. This movie is, I believe, some sort of Asian movie, probably Korean. Let's see. Who made it? Daniel Kwan. I don't. I don't know if that's Korean or not. Let's see. American absurdist comedy drama film written and directed by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner. That sounds Jewish. Kwan is Asian. Oh, and a Chinese immigrant played by Michelle Yeoh. I don't know if this movie is Korean or. Chinese. Who cares? From what I understand, I mean, let's just read the thing. When an interdimensional rupture unravels reality, an unlikely hero must channel their newfound powers to fight bizarre and bewildering dangers from the multiverse as the fate of the world hangs in the balance. So this is kind of like Doctor Strange, I guess, but not in a big superhero universe. Languages English can't meet. So I can't meet this Chinese. I guess it's a Chinese movie. Someone described this movie to me. They told me about it. They said it was pretty good. Yeah, they told me basically it's someone, she has like the ability to jump to a different kind of parallel universe and like I guess jump into her body in that universe and gain if she spends like 10 minutes there she gains that person's skill and then jumps back to her universe or to a different universe she gains that person's skills for like one minute or something however the timing translates the more time you spend there the more time those skills continue when you come back to your universe I think or or a different universe or something and like while you're there you have her powers something like that but the whole point i guess there's some villain who is like who is has a similar power maybe is even more powerful probably but the idea is you know she'll like jump to another universe and then she like and then now she can do karate for a few minutes and then she can fight like some people that way or something like that but i was thinking what they could do like they could do a scene where um basically the villain is like chasing her 
and he's like getting and, and she's like jumping in between different realms trying to escape him but he like keeps figuring out where she's gonna go so he's like catching up and he's gonna like kill her or whatever um i don't know if that's how it works but let's pretend that it is because i haven't seen the movie and then so she's like but she's getting like more and more reckless with her jumps like i know she probably has to say or do but think in a certain way to jump to a different uh universe multiverse whatever and then she accidentally jumps to a universe where she has down syndrome and the uh, villain wouldn't have expected this and he like completely loses her and doesn't know where she is and like first when she jumps into the universe she has like some res residual like karate skills from you know the previous universe she was in but just like a couple seconds of it so she's like you know she lives with her parents still like her parents just like take care of her since she's down syndrome and like she quickly like she like does like a whole bunch of like moves like karate like she does like some kick or something and they're like whoa what, uh, never seen her do that before and then you know she loses her power and you know when she first gets there she's like mom i beat the bad guy i beat like the doing like that sort of thing and she's like oh that's very nice honey but she realizes that she like loses him and she's like, okay, good. Now I'm going to jump back to, you know, whatever world she was, she, she was going to jump to or something. But because of her Down syndrome, she can't figure out how to do it. Like She's just, like, not intelligent enough to actually, like, jump between realms anymore. Because, like, she has that power currently. So she's just, like, stuck there. And she ends up being stuck there for, like, years and years. So I would say this should be, like, you know, like a 20-minute segment in the film where she's, like, gradually trying to relearn how to jump between realms but like with you know a very you know uh weakened mind since she has down syndrome but uh, eventually over the course of you know years she finally figures out how to jump out of this world just to get to any just to get you know she finds some sort of fail safe or something just to like put her back in her world and she finally ends up back there but since she spent so much time in the down syndrome universe she has like a month of like down syndrome ability so she basically is behaving as, as a down syndrome person she tries to communicate with people right away but they're like i eh, guess she's like talking she's like i'm back you know like that sort of thing and then uh so then she's like all right i don't want this is going to be weird i don't want people to, to like think less of me or think there's something wrong with me so she's like oh you know what i'll uh i'll pretend that i'm doing some sort of like chinese like zen uh like silent um like meditation thing so she's like i gotta tell people that i'm that i'm not going to be speaking for a month just that she can let the you know the residual down syndrome abilities wear off but she's like i can't talk to them and tell them this though so she's gonna like write it down and she like tries to write something down but it's just like completely gibberish since it's down syndrome it doesn't make any sense and people are like confused and she's just like eating so much candy over the course of months like over the course of like the month that she's there um she's like getting fatter and fatter but eventually it all wears off and then she's just back to the regular storyline she's back to normal and she's back to like trying to defeat the bad guy so that's what i thought would be like kind of like a cool like you know just a way to kind of step away from the main plot for a little bit before you head back to it but i don't know i'm guessing that doesn't happen in the movie 95% of Rotten Tomatoes, so it did really good. How did it do on Metacritic? 81, that's really good too. Because people like this movie. Um, next up, The Fablemans. I've seen a trailer for this movie, it looks terrible. I hate, I do not like Steven Spielberg. And this movie looks like aggressively bad to me. But, I mean, Steven Spielberg made that horrible, uh, what is that movie called? Is that a video game movie? Ready Player One. And then recently he made that movie, The Post which is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's, it, I mean, it, it is truly brutal to get through. There's some truly horrendous, there's like a scene where uh, Mel Streep is like, she's like taking over, I guess, the Washington Post because her husband died or something like that. But she's like incompetent and like very not confident. Everyone's like, she can't do the job. And it's like, it's true, she can't. And then like, but there's scenes where people like, they go up to her office, have their back turned to her with her door open and she's like standing there and they're like, talking to someone else about her like behind her back but like how did you end up in this position where you're like standing with your back to her and she's right there and they're like she she's a woman she can't do, like all these like just stupid just like ridiculous scenes it's like how, couldn't you have had her like eavesdrop in a more believable way it's like a woman empowerment scene at the end i can't remember exactly how it goes but it's horrible and the fablemans looks pretty terrible that name itself is like very 
there's something very like abrasively like trying uh it just like irks me it makes me think like oh it's trying to be like a nice family movie drama slash coming of age story let's see what is this about young sammy fableman um falls in love with the movies with movies after his parents take him to see the greatest show on earth what is, that's like 1960 or something that movie is that a best picture one or am i thinking of something else armed with a camera sammy starts to make his own films at home much to the delight of his supportive mother so this movie is just about steven spielberg as a child i think david lynch is in this interesting but it's just like you know steven spielberg like sucking himself off basically well sucking himself off as a child he's just it's steven spielberg molesting himself molesting the child version of himself it's i think i heard something at one point that there was like some girl on like a set like decades ago like a steven spielberg set who was like raped to death or something like that and people were like maybe uh, steven spielberg did it i don't know if that's true though but i just like heard that that could completely all be wrong but i don't know anyway the trailer looks it just looks bad it's just like he the i don't understand what the conflict of the movie even is i don't even like doing these things where it's like you have to have a conflict like but to a certain degree it's like what is the movie about if if it's just he has a mother who's super supportive of him making movies and his father is actually a very supportive and loving father but he's just not entirely convinced that film is like good for him to go into that's like the conflict and it's like Paul Dano is his father and it makes like Paul Dano look like a boring actor there's a I saw some scene in one of the trailers with uh he, he he's in the car and like just like the way he's delivering his lines is like it's just like aggressively like trying to be like good-natured or something I don't know it's just like I don't know how they made this I don't know why they made this movie because it doesn't look interesting at all there's just the whole like all the previews just Michelle Williams like watching like a movie that he made of like he like took a video of his trains and his trains crashing and she's watching and just sobbing and then it's like Judd Hirsch telling him like you know your mother is, is was also creative and your father isn't and, like that's just like that's the entire thing it looks very bad I do not want to see this it's two and a half hours long too it was like I is the Fablemans worth watching film is maybe a light average film that's not particularly memorable <laughs> uh, it has a great Rotten tomato score 92 percent 7.7 by the fans on 84 metacritic so the critics are going all out for this one let's see what the fans think of uh the Rotten tomato score 83 that was actually pretty good overall but this is definitely more of a critic movie, even though it looks horrible. Next up, Tar. I don't know what this is about. Is this a, this is like either a blind or a deaf movie. Last year, I think a deaf movie won. So let's see what Tar is about. Oh, it's neither. It's a music movie. Renowned musician Lydia Tar is days away from recording the symphony that will elevate her career. When all elements seem to conspire against her, Lydia's adopted daughter Petra becomes an integral emotional support for her struggling mother. I don't, I don't, I have no interest in this. I don't even want to talk about this. It could be fine, it might be good, but it just doesn't sound like anything that I'd be entertained by. This guy, Todd Field, what has he made? He's already made a few movies. Actually, let's see what, what did Tar do on Rotten Tomatoes real quick. 92 on Metacritic, that's very good. And 91 on, on Rotten Tomatoes, 73 audience score, so not as good there. All right. What's next? Top Gun Maverick. Honestly, I'm not really interested in this either. I saw the first one a long time ago and I didn't really like it. It was, it was more action. It wasn't really my thing. But everyone seemed to love it. So, after more than 30 years of service as one of the Navy's top aviators, Pete Maverick Mitchell is where, is where he belongs, pushing the envelope as a courageous test pilot and dodging the advancement in rank that would ground him. <laughs> Training a detachment of graduates for a special assignment, Maverick must confront the ghosts of his past and his deepest fears culminating in a mission that demands the ultimate sacrifice from those who choose to fly it. Someone dies at the end, I guess. Uh, Miles Teller's in this. Val Kilmer. Is what's her name? I'm guessing the girl from the first one isn't in it. She's like an old, like, ugly lesbian now. She was, like, hot when she was younger, but now she's not. So I don't think she's even in this. But, you know what? I'd watch this, and I might even enjoy it. Everyone said it was good. Well, I did a great on Tomatoes. 
96. 78 on Metacritic's pretty good too. And I think the fans liked it too. Let's see. 99, wow. So people love this movie. I get the feeling I wouldn't love it, but who knows. Next up, Triangle of Sadness. What the heck is this? I've never even heard of this. Carl and Yaya, a couple of influencers, are invited to a luxury cruise ship alongside a group of out-of-touch wealthy people. The situation takes an unexpected turn when a brutal storm hits the ship. So I don't know what this is about. This could be a gay movie. Oh, is that Woody Harrelson? A fashion model celebrity couple join an eventful cruise for the super rich. And it's a comedy. I, I mean, I guess I I don't know anything about this. It's It could be good, I guess. Comedy drama. Social hierarchy is turned upside down, revealing the tawdry relationship between power and beauty. Celebrity model couple Carl and Yaya are invited on a luxury cruise. Oh, I already read this. Held by an unhinged boat captain. The first appeared Instagrammable ends catastrophically, leaving the survivors stranded on a desert island and fighting for survival. Okay, so they do a desert island thing. That's kind of not super unique, but I guess it could be good. Honestly, as far as. Let's see, let's discount Banshee since I've seen it. As far as this all goes, I think I'd rather watch this than any of the others. Like, I'd watch that first, then I'd probably watch. Maybe All Quiet, and then Top Gun, and then Everything Everywhere, and then Elvis, then Avatar, then Tar, then The Fablemans. But we have one more, called Women Talking, which, does that sound like something someone wants to listen to? The, woman, the women of an isolated religious colony reveal a shocking secret about the colony's men. Oh boy, I wonder what it is. For years, the men have occasionally drugged the women and then raped them. <laughs> This is just like a, like a reverse fantasy. The truth comes out and the women talk about their new situation. What do you mean they talk about their new situa situation? What does that even mean? Is women talking based on a real story? It is. One that was fictionalized by author... Ma she was born in a mannequin in Canada. She lived... So it's not based on a real story. It's based on the concept of her being in a, you know, a strict... Being raised in a strict, like, Mennonite community. But... The, the idea of them being drugged and raped does not seem to be, I don't know, it doesn't sound like that is what happened. Honestly, I would watch this because I'd probably, I'd probably get a kick out of it. Because it just sounds like, uh, like, I don't even understand what the purpose of it really is. Like, I guess it's just supposed to make women distrustful of men or something. I don't know. Or to kind of, like, es establish the idea that, like, oh, we're, uh, we're like put down by men, we're like, a, we're abused by men or something like that. The idea that they're like at a, a disadvantage because of men. 91 Rotten Tomatoes, 78 Metacritic. So pretty good. Um, that movie might be funny though. But that's all of them. I'd probably put that too as far as interest goes actually. I'm, I'd be curious to watch that. Okay, let's see. Any other, let's skim through the other ones. See if there's anything interesting. This movie Babylon was supposed to get a whole bunch of nominations and got nothing. Living by Kazuo Ishimuro. Let's see what that is. It's a British drama. It sounds Japanese. A veteran civil servant receives a medical diagnosis that inspires him to move to the south coast and cram some fun into his remaining days. He meets a sunny young female colleague who seems to have the pep that had previously escaped him. Interesting. And this, the main actor is Bill N Oh boy. Nighy? I don't know. But it's about an old British man. It's a movie written by a Japanese man about an old British man getting pussy from a young British woman. So that's cool. What else do we got? I've been talking was nominated. Glass Onion? Okay, yeah. Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery was nominated. Ryan Johnson got a nomination. And my question about this is I haven't seen the first uh, Knives Out, but... Why, how does this title make any sense? Like, they could have just called it Knives Out 2, or something, or just called it Glass Onion. But, like, is Knives Out an organization in, in this, in these movies? If not, there's, like, no, there's no real context for calling it a Knives Out mystery. That doesn't really make sense. Does that make, do you, do you see what I mean? Like, at least, like, I don't like this, but when they would make those movies called, you know, something, a Star Wars story, it would be, 
like Star Wars is already like an established universe. It's it's gone beyond the description of of the word. It's like that's the universe is Star Wars, but it's like Knives Out is not like a universe. You know what I mean? So unless if like Knives Out is the organization that you know the main detective goes through, and this is like one of his mysteries is the Glass Onion. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Uh, international films. So All Quiet is going is going for that as well. There's an Argentinian movie called Argentina. Cool. Um, EO European European Onion with Paul. I don't know what EO means. EO, a great donkey with melancholy eyes, encounters good and bad in his journey through life, experiences joy and pain, and endures the wheel of fortune. I guess this is a comedy. I don't know. Uh, okay. Let's look at the actors real quick. So we've got the Elvis guy, we've got Colin Farrell, we've got Brendan Fraser for the, oh, The Whale wasn't nominated for Best Picture. I thought that movie was gonna get nominated for something. Maybe he'll win Best Actor or whatever. Apparently he was like raped or whatever at one point or something. A reclusive, morbidly obese English teacher attempts to reconnect with his estranged teenage daughter. Okay. Oh, is this? Yeah, that's the girl from, what's it called, um, from, uh, Stranger Things. And, oh, I guess this has got to be the lady from Everything Everywhere All at Once. But, yeah, this movie looks, I don't think I'd like, I think, I heard somewhere that he's, like, also gay or something. He's fat and gay. I don't know if that's true. That's what I heard. Uh, doesn't look particularly interesting to me. Oh, yeah, look at this. For Wakanda Forever. They got a nomination. I can't I can't imagine that's actually deserving, but who knows. Oh, Anna Diarmas got a nomination. That's good. I, I remember when this movie came out, it, like, they premiered it at some festival. I don't remember which one. She got, a, like, a 12-minute standing ovation or something. It just seems like an absurdly long time to be, like, clapping for... Like, she's standing... Like, I saw a little clip of her standing there, like, thank you. But she's, like, doing that for 12 minutes. I was thinking about going to one of these. Cause I, I think that movie was rated NC-17, so I'm sure it's, like... I'm sure there's a lot of very explicit sexual content of Anna de Armas. And I was thinking about, like, if you go to, like, one of those premieres and you have all these, like, ho like you know, these, like, Hollywood people pretending to, like, evaluate the movie and be like, oh, this is very, in like, no, what, like, uh, oh, wow, that's, like, a work of, like, oh, look at this. And, like, they're just, like, doing that to scenes of her, like, like naked and stuff. And they're just like, huh, like, an interesting choice. Like, they're, like, just, like pretending to, like, enjoy the film. And, uh, just, like, the first time she, like, shows up on screen naked, like, you know, like, the, the theater's, like, dead quiet, and I'm there, I just go, like, damn, very loudly, still just dead quiet. 